Last class, we discussed the irreversible reaction of hydride and organometallic reagents to ketones and aldehydes, but we didn't really delve into what irreversibility means or explain why those reactions were irreversible. Let's look at a generic reaction coordinate diagram to remind us. Remember that reversibility has to do with the equilibrium constant for a reaction, which is tied to the spontaneity of the reaction through the, re through the equation delta G equals negative RT natural log of KEQ. The more favorable or spontaneous a reaction, the greater its equilibrium constant. A purely, perfectly reversible reaction has an, e an equilibrium constant of 1, and therefore delta G of 0. The starting materials and products have identical free energies. Let's apply this to the generic reaction for nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl compound. The starting materials are some generic nucleophile and a carbonyl containing electrophile. They react by the nucleophile the nucleophile attacking CO pi star to create a tetrahedral intermediate. The reverse of this step is this. A lone pair on oxygen swings down and kicks out the nucleophile, getting us right back where we started. This type of step, which I call the lone pair push, or LPP, ought to look somewhat familiar to you you saw steps like this frequently in Chem 202. Here, nu minus is acting as a leaving group. The stronger the nucleophile and the stronger the electrophile, the higher in energy the starting materials are, and therefore the more favorable the forward reaction, the larger its equilibrium constant and the more irreversible it is. We can also think about the reversibility of this step by looking at the backwards reaction. Here, the poorer that nucleophile is as a leaving group, the harder it is to go backward, and the more irreversible the forward reaction is. The hydride reagents, lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride, and Grignard reagents fit both these criteria. They're strong nucleophiles, because they have high energy homos, negative charges at least partially localized on not very electronegative atoms. Their reactions with carbonyl compounds are also irreversible because to go backward, you'd have to kick out either H minus or C minus, very bad leaving groups. With weaker nucleophiles, we have much lower energy homos, so the starting materials are lower in energy this makes the reaction more reversible. In the next videos, we'll look at how weaker nucleophiles react with ketones and aldehydes.